Okay, in this video, I'm comparing GPT 5.2 to Codex Max. GPT 5.2 is OpenAI's latest general purpose model. Codex Max, on the other hand, is a coding optimized variant built on GPT 5.1. So this sets up a really interesting question. Is the newer generalist model better for coding tasks? Or does the coding specialist still win, even though it's built on an older base model? If you saw my last video comparing GPT 5.2 to Opus 4.5, I'm using the exact same tests here a Kanban task manager and a Space Invaders game. That means you can directly compare all three models. If you want to have a look at that last test video, check the description below for the link. Now, one important clarification before we start, GPT 5.1 and Codex Max actually share the same base model. The difference is that Codex Max is trained and tuned specifically for coding. So think of it like this, GPT 5.1 is a general purpose model that can code similar to GPT 5.2, which is the latest upgrade. Codex Max, on the other hand, is a coding specialist that just ships clean code. So same brain, but different priorities. It is trained specifically for coding tasks. What makes Codex Max even more interesting is that it supports multiple reasoning levels. The higher the reasoning level, the more mo the model thinks before responding. And that extra thinking shows up as more tokens and higher cost. In this video, I'm testing Codex Max at every reasoning level against GPT 5.2 using the same API harness with exact token tracking. So the goal is simple, which model performs better, which reasoning level gives the best value, and what should we actually be using for real coding work moving forward. So let's start with the Kanban task manager and we'll walk through the prompt we'll be using. Okay, here's the prompt we're using for the Kanban task manager. Again, it's the same prompt we used in the previous test video where we compared GPT 5.2 against Opus 4.5. So just a quick recap, this Kanban task manager should have three columns to do in progress and done, the ability to add tasks, move them between columns and delete tasks. We want a task count per column and everything needs to persist to local storage. We've locked dependencies to React 18 and Vite, no extra libraries, and for design we've told them to create a polished modern UI with creative freedom. A simple benchmark task, not a production grade prompt, let's now see how the builds compare. Okay, so we're in dev mode here, and what we're looking at now is the GPT 5.2 version. I'm not going to go through every version in depth in this video. That would take too long, so I'm just going to pick out the few key takeaways from the builds. The good news is that all five builds work. There were no bugs and no broken functionality in any of the builds. The difference with GPT 5.2, which is the one we can see on screen, is that it uses a pop-up modal for adding tasks. This keeps the board cleaner, so we can see that to add a new task, we click the new task button and this pops up. It's the only model that used the create and add task function in this way. It also added timestamps on the cards and edit icons. It was the only model that used this functionality. So if we click edit, we can change the title and description and we have the timestamp of when it was added. So those are the unique features that GPT 5.2 built in its build. The next build we're going to look at is Codex Max with default reasoning. As you can see here, the same as all of the Codex Max builds, the add new task is built into the page. So we can see new task title and description is built in rather than the pop-up like GPT 5.2. But we can see here that it does work. All the functionality is correct. And if we just add a task as an example, we can see it gets added to to-do. We can use the button to move it across or drag it. And the status updates when we do that, so it works. The unique thing that Codex Max on default did is it added a search tasks, but that's the difference and the unique build from Codex Max with default reasoning. A quick look at Codex Max with medium reasoning. We can see here the design's a bit different. We'll add a task here as an example. We can see the difference here with this one is that the Status label isn't on the individual card. It's in that bucket, but not on the card like the other versions. As you'll see when we look at the costs, it is actually the cheapest one, but that's the only real notable difference in the functionality and build from Codex Max using medium reasoning. We can see all of the other functionality works correctly. And here is Codex Max with extra high reasoning. As you can see, very similar to the design of Codex Max with low reasoning, essentially a dark mode version of that board. 
and all of that functionality is the same. The other difference is we have labels on the individual cards here to do in progress and done. We can see this is a pretty simple and straightforward task just as a benchmark so we didn't run into any bugs on any of the builds. The key takeaway now after having had a quick look at all of the boards is going to be cost. So we'll jump over and we'll see exactly what the cost was for each model for this Kanban build. And here we can see the full cost breakdown. GPT 5.2 is our baseline at 13.2 cents. Now if we have a look at the Codex models, Codex Max Medium came in at 4 cents. That's 70% cheaper than GPT 5.2 for the same task. It used the fewest output tokens under 4,000 compared to GPT's 9,300. But remember it did cut some features. Codex Max Low was 4.8 cents. Also very cheap and all functionality worked. Codex Max Extra High was 8.1 cents. Still cheaper than GPT 5.2. Nice design and everything worked. Now here's something interesting, Codex Max on default reasoning mode, the recommended setting, actually needed a repair. It forgot to include index.html on the first attempt. The harness caught the error, sent it back, and it fixed it. That's why you see higher input tokens, 1,985 versus 566 for the others. Could be a one-off, but it's worth noting that even the low reasoning level passed first try, while the recommended setting didn't. So on pure cost, Codex Max Medium wins at 70% cheaper. But if you want the safest option with extra features, extra high at 8.1 cents is still 40% cheaper than GPT 5.2. Before we move on, here's the key takeaway so far. For simple apps, Codex Max is cheaper and gets the job done, but we haven't stress tested reliability and complexity yet. The Space Invaders game will push reasoning and token limits much harder, and that's where things get really interesting, so let's jump over to that now. So here is the prompt for the Space Invaders game. Again, it's the exact same prompt we used in the previous video with GPT 5.2 compared to Opus 4.5. I'll link that video in the description below and in the top right if you want to check that out. The Space Invaders game uses HTML5 canvas, player ship moves left to right, shoots with a space bar, grid of aliens that move and shoot back, collision detection, score tracking, live system, win and lose conditions. This is the harder test. There's more logic, more moving parts, more things that can go wrong. We've already seen that with Opus, that there are bugs that can show up. We've also got the same dependency set up, React 18 feet, no external game libraries. So they have to build the game loop and physics from scratch. So let's see how the builds compare. Okay, so we're in dev mode here. What we can see on screen is the GPT 5.2 version of the Space Invaders game. This was the most polished of all the builds. It's the only one that included a start screen with a start button, which you can see all the codex versions just throw you straight into the game when you open it up. GBT 5.2 also added audio and a flashing animation when you get hit. That again is just polish that it has added and it's got good pacing and plays well. We'll give it a quick go here. You can hear the audio and see the gameplay in action. And we do a full play test on the previous test video, so check that out if you want to see more. But that's an example of GPT 5.2. First things first, for the Codex versions, unfortunately, Codex Max Low is broken, it's unplayable, and there's clear bugs. This is it on screen. Now, if I click restart, you'll see that there's just a lot of bullets coming out, and it just keeps resetting, so it doesn't even work. You can't actually play the game. You can see it just keeps resetting back to the center like that. So clear bugs, not working. The takeaway here, Codex Max Low, not suitable for those more complex builds. Next, we have Codex Max with extra high reasoning. This plays well. It's got a nice design and good pacing. Visually, it's on par with GPT 5.2. It's just missing that start screen. You can see here how it started automatically and now is in game over mode. There's no audio or hit effects. We'll hit restart and see it in action. We can see visually it's really good. I've got to try and clear all of these bottom rows because they're moving down quite fast. The, the ship does flash when you get hit by a bullet, so that is also happening on this version. And we can see the functionality is working. So this is, again, Codex Max with extra high reasoning. We're probably just going to miss out here. Oh, no, there we go. So we've won that one. That's a look at Codex Max extra high. Next, we'll have a look at Codex Max with default reasoning. We can see here the design on screen. Again, it just started automatically, so we're on the game over screen. We have to press restart. We can see the issue with this version is the pacing is just a bit too fast. 
all the bullets come down also at the same time. There's no real variety in terms of when they drop. And as you can see, it's just a bit too fast with the pacing. So you can't really get through a level before all of those aliens reach the bottom. And there's a lot of bullets that come out at the same time, which makes it difficult. So in terms of the actual mechanism of playing, you'd have to probably prompt and iterate to get to a point where it was playable like the GPT 5.2 and Codex Max Extra High versions. So that's a slight issue here with Codex Max on default reasoning. And finally, Codex Max with medium reasoning. So there are challenges here with the pacing as well, where I think the bullets are coming down a bit too fast, and that makes it a bit more difficult to avoid them and get through a level. So that's a look at Codex Max with medium reasoning. We've now reviewed all the Space Invaders games. We'll do a quick recap now when we look at the cost and token usage for all models. Okay, so here's the full cost breakdown, and there's a lot to unpack here. Starting with the cheaper options, Codex Max default came in at $0.05, cents, medium at $0.7.7. .7 cents. Both worked, but the pacing was a bit too fast. They were playable, but need some iteration to get to a point that GPT 5.2 produced from a one-shot. Codex Max Low was $0.07, cents, but it was broken and unplayable, so we'll write that one off completely. Now, here's where it gets interesting with Codex Max Extra High. All the builds had a 16,000 max output token limit. Most models had no problem with that. GPT 5.2, for example, used about 11,000. Medium used 7,600, so plenty of headroom. But Extra High, it used all 16,000 tokens on internal reasoning and hit the limit before generating any code. The response was completely empty, so that's 22 cents gone with zero output. The repair turn added another 15,000 tokens to actually produce the code, so that's why the total cost for extra high was 44 cents, nearly three times what GPT 5.2 cost. So I decided to rerun extra high with a 32,000 token limit to give it more headroom. This time it passed first try and used 19,500 tokens and cost about 20 cents. So still more expensive than GPT 5.2, but a lot more reasonable than the first test. And I tested the rebuild in dev mode and it was pretty much exactly the same as the original extra high build. So the reason it initially cost 44 cents was because it hit that token limit of 16,000 and had to do another turn to complete the task. Whereas with that increased token limit, it was able to give me the exact same output essentially, but the cost was lower because it was able to pass in one turn. Now let's have a look at GPT 5.2. It cost 15.4 cents, pass first try, and it's the only one with a start screen and audio. So it gets a big tick for reliability and performance. The takeaway here is that in the meantime, it might be a good idea to use GPT 5.2 for your coding tasks until Codex migrates to that GPT 5.2 base model. I'm not sure if that's something that OpenAI are planning to do. I would assume they would, but I'm not too sure if or when they are actually going to do that. But in the meantime, GPT 5.2 looks like a better model to use for more complex tasks, as we can see here. It might be cheaper for things like Codex Max Medium, but you're going to get a better result with GPT 5.2, as we can see from this one-shot build. Extra high, on the other hand, you have to set a higher token limit or you'll risk burning your budget on an empty response. So that's a consideration. Even when it works, though, you can see it's cost more than GPT 5.2 anyway, and the output is similar, if not better, by GPT 5.2. So again, it looks like a really good model to use moving forward for coding tasks. Okay, so let's now recap the results from both tests. GPT 5.2 passed both tests on the first try. No configuration needed. It just worked, so it was the most reliable. Codex Max, it depends on your settings. Medium was 100% reliable. It passed both tests first try. Extra high, on the other hand, needed a higher token limit. At 16,000 tokens, it burned the entire budget on reasoning and returned nothing on the first try. At 32,000 token limit, though, it worked fine and delivered a working game. So what should you actually use? For simple tasks, you could use Codex Max Medium. It's going to be cheaper and it is reliable, but you will get more polish from GPT 5.2 just at a bit of an extra cost. So you can still use that, but that's something to keep in mind. For complex tasks where quality matters, GPT 5.2 looks like the choice. More polish out of the box, no config needed, and predictable results. Even extra high at its best couldn't match the extras that GPT 5.2 added, and it cost more as well. And use extra high with caution. As you saw, we needed to increase the token limit to 32,000, so that's something to consider if you are 
prompting it on more complex tasks. Even when it worked at 20 cents, GPT 5.2 at 15 cents still produced a more polished result. So the extra thinking didn't beat the generalist in that case. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more model comparison videos. And don't forget to check out the previous test with GPT 5.2 versus Opus 4.5. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.